again. Welcome, everybody. My name is Bob Stewart. And today we're going to talk about unlocking the secrets to keyword phrases. If you want to talk to me on Twitter or Facebook, I'm up there at the top, at Active Bob. And we've also got uh, Active Rain, where every day we're sharing fun stuff on Twitter, some of the posts that you guys have written, some of the cool stuff that we come across related to real estate out there on a daily basis. So unlocking the secrets to keyword phrases. Let's go full screen here. A keyword phrase is just that that thing they search for in Google. Okay, we we all <laughs> we all search Google, or we search Bing, or we search Yahoo. We all kind of have our favorite search engine. But a keyword phrase, and, and we're looking at all of this stuff from the perspective of what does somebody go online and search for that might lead them to finding our blog. And and the first thing. Okay, we, we get about 2,000 pieces of content that are added to Active Rain every day by you guys. And there's some really good stuff out there. Okay, the, the, the first thing that you need to, to think about when you're writing a blog post, and, and I guess this is really only from the perspective, though, of if you are looking to get this blog post found in the search engines. Okay, the first thing that you need to think about is will anyone ever search for this? And so, Whatever we pick to be the title of our blog post, that's our keyword phrase, okay? Whether you think about it or not. And as we look through some of these blog posts that I'm showing on the screen, and, and these are, you know, the little part that we see underlined there is going to be the keyword phrase the person's chosen. And, and again, it's, it's whether they decided to, to really think about it or not. Because as we look at, like, the first one, and I don't mean to pick on any of these folks because the content that these guys were writing about was all very good content. They just didn't take a lot of time to think about that keyword phrase from the perspective of will anyone ever search for this? So Brian, his the, the top left one there is a market update for 10-11-2012. Where? Like, what is this a market update for? Um, you know, how would somebody potentially go out there and find this piece of content? Like, pumpkin festivals are so much fun. Look, I agree. Right, but if I'm the the person looking for information about the Art and Wine Pumpkin Festival in Ladysmith Village, which is what this post is actually about, I'm probably not going to come across David's because he didn't give a lot of thought to the keyword phrase that he used for the title of his blog post. And I see this every day, and I see it in large quantities, large quantities of blog posts that are being produced where the title or the keyword phrase that the person is attempting to target in the search engines and that is attempting to get people you know to find them via is just something that isn't something somebody's going to search for like a charming home in a wonderful community the one we see on the bar, bottom right there i would imagine a lot of folks are interested in a charming home in a wonderful community the problem becomes they're probably not going to search for that. And even if they did search for that, in, in our case, as it relates to real estate, most of the time they're going to use some kind of a geographic thing, right? They want a charming home in a wonderful community in Seattle at the very least. Again, these aren't generally ways that people set out to search for something. So would it be more likely that they would search for something like this? And these are all Google search results that were pulled out of various searches that people have done in the last 30 days on Active Rain. At the end of today's class, we are going to give you guys a download. It's a PDF that has 500 different ways people searched homes for sale in the last 30 days. And there's a lot of variety in there, and, and we're going to go through this class and kind of give you some of that variety. But you'll, you will have some really good examples at the end of the day of how people search. Now, you're going to have to kind of take this stuff and apply it to your own market, right? Because the homes for sale, and actually, I actually think that that top left one is condos for sale near Emory University, right? You probably don't live near Emory University, but you may very well live near the University of Washington or, or near Western Washington University or Eastern Washington University or one of these, right, right some other school that's not Emory. So you have to take these things that we're going to give you at the end of the class and kind of apply them to where you live and where you do business. Bank-owned homes for sale in Vancouver, Washington, right? That particular one right there gets searched for a lot. This guy gets a lot of traffic based on that. And he could have written something like, you know, awesome prices on houses in Vancouver. Right? That wouldn't have been quite as impactful because people don't go out there and kind of search 
in that manner. Oceanfront homes for sale in Vero Beach, ranch style home, Granville County property taxes. There's all these. These are more indicative of the way that people go out and search for information. It's not kind of these general sorts of things. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this concept of the long tail in the first week of class, but just for some review, the big head is going to be those common phrases searched for in high volume, where about the top eight of these phrases in any one of our markets make up 30% of the search volume. Now, when you think about how people can search for real estate, and you consider that only eight phrases make up about 30% of the search volume, that's a lot of the search volume, okay, for, for just eight phrases, because there are literally, an, I mean, it almost becomes an infinite number of ways that people can search for this stuff in our markets, okay? What are those top eight phrases? They're things like, let's just use Seattle as an example. Homes for sale in Seattle, Seattle condos for sale, Seattle real estate, Seattle houses for sale. Those are kind of those big head terms, right? Then on the long tail, this is literally the other 99.9% .9 of the ways that somebody can, can search real estate related stuff in our market. Now, no one of those searches, so of those other you know, thousands and thousands of different keyword combinations that somebody could type in, no one of those is done very often. Okay, because we've taken those top eight, those real popular ones, those general ones, and those become kind of the big head. Right? But out here on this long tail, there's all sorts of stuff. Right? I'm going to show you guys a bunch of the ways you can kind of target these other things. Now, no one of those searches is done very often, but the cumulative of that traffic makes up about 70% of the traffic that's out there, which is a lot. Right? Now, the big head is going to be really hard for us. And in fact, some of the benefits of the long tail is we have an ability to rank on page one when we start to look at that long tail. It's going to be really challenging, especially as you're getting started, to rank on the first page for those big head terms, right? Who's there? Trulia, Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, right? Those are the companies, especially these days, right, as Google has updated with Panda and Penguin and all their furry, fuzzy animals, right? There, a lot of that or, or, or some of the more recent additions to the to Panda and Penguin have been based on this idea of like brand exposure, right? They're, they're willing to give more exposure to brands. So companies like Trulia and Realtor.com and Zillow, they've built up brand awareness with the search engines. So for those big head terms like homes for sale in Seattle, Seattle real estate, and if any of you guys were to do those terms in your market, you're going to see the Zillows and the Trulias and the Realtor.coms. But when we look out there on that long tail, on those 99% of the other ways that people search for stuff, we find that we actually have an ability to rank on page one if we do the right things, right? And last week we talked about a bunch of the right things that we want to do in our blog posts. Another benefit of a long tail is we're going to find targeted search traffic. We're going to get in front of consumers and our blog post is going to be found by people that are doing very specific and very targeted sorts of searches. Okay, now this targeted search traffic is going to be a benefit to us because it means that we end up getting in front of people that are closer to taking action, right? That person that types homes for sale in Seattle is probably less likely to be taking action. And in our case, that means, right, becoming a lead on our website or something of that nature. They're less, maybe it's even picking the phone up, but they're less closer to taking action than somebody that might type in something like, you know, homes for sale in Seattle with a three car garage. Homes for sale in Seattle near Amazon, right? Condos for sale on Capitol Hill near, near Amazon. So the benefits of being out on that long tail is we've got people that are closer to taking action, in addition to, the, to our ability to rank and getting much more targeted search traffic. So what do we think about when selecting keyword phrases? Now, this next little bit, if you're a loan officer or you're a, you know, a stager or, or, or if you're really if you're not a real estate agent, you kind of have to have your thinking cap on a little bit because the examples that I'm going to give in here are all very kind of particular to a real estate agent. The concept still applies to no matter what business you're in. Even if you weren't in real estate, these concepts still apply. Okay, so and again, we touched on this a little bit last week, but we're really going to think in terms of when we're going out and we're setting out to select a keyword phrase, and that really becomes the starting point for our blog. 
Okay, sometimes we can back into a keyword phrase. We can go out, we know what we want to write about, we write the blog post, and then we can kind of back into the keyword phrase. But generally, we're going to want to have that keyword phrase in mind as we set out to write the blog post. And so we want to be thinking about subject matter and geography because these are the two components that are going to make up most keyword phrases out there, right? Every keyword phrase has some component of subject matter, right? No matter whether it's in real estate or not. Like, there's just that's just the nature of a keyword phrase. Now, as it relates to real estate, what people do is they will often kind of hone that keyword phrase with the geography. So, again, this is this is recapping some stuff that we talked about last week, but we're going to get more specific with our geography and have a less specific subject matter. I'll give you an example. Okay, I'll give you an example of some of the ways you can get more specific with your geography, right? Our state is going to be kind of our, our widest geography, right? Homes for sale in Washington. Let right? me get a little bit more specific. Maybe somebody's looking for homes for sale in King County. We're still probably not at a point where we can just write something and have it ranking on the search engines. Now we get a little bit more specific. Homes for sale in Seattle, right? Maybe it's homes for sale in Green Lake, Seattle. Green Lake being a neighborhood or a community of Seattle, we got a bunch of these, you know, Green Lake, Capitol Hill, Ballard, right? You can get even more specific, and we can focus on a specific subdivision or condo complex in our marketplace, and I talked a bunch about that last week, and we used that as some of the examples as we went through the best practices for writing a blog post to get it to rank. Another way that we can kind of think about geography is, is doing a search or doing a a blog post like homes for sale in Seattle near Amazon, right? In in, the, in our market right now, Amazon just built a huge new complex basically in downtown Seattle, and they are flooding the market with with homeowners. People are coming in, and a, a lot of these folks are moving to Seattle. They don't necessarily know too much about the area, right? So they are going to Google and doing searches like you know condos for sale near Amazon. Condos for sale in Seattle near Amazon, right? Where the, the specific geography becomes in Seattle near Amazon, right? They're getting very specific, and, and we can have these things around big employers. So obviously Amazon, right? We've got Microsoft. We've got Boeing. If you have big employers, even if you have smaller employers in your area, right, you can, you can have content out there about homes for sale near where they're going to end up working, right? We're near where they want to live. Landmarks, so you might think about things like transportation, like if you're in the, the Bay Area, it might be homes for sale in Oakland near the BART, right? Maybe you have schools in your area that are highly desirable, like in, in Washington, we've got the Lake Washington School District. It's a highly desirable school district that covers the east side, like Bellevue and Redmond and Kirkland, so it might be homes for sale in Redmond in the Lake Washington School District. So those are a couple of the ways we can get more specific with our geography, right? It's just some examples. So homes for sale in Carriagewood Renton, where Carriagewood is the name of a subdivision, right? Condos for sale, and we see we use the name of the specific condo complex. Homes for sale near the Microsoft campus, right? So we give you some kind of examples here. Now, if we want to be less specific with our geography, then we need to get more specific with our subject matter. On the geography side, and getting more specific, there, there kind of becomes this, this finite number of these kinds of posts you could write. Because you only have so many subdivisions, you only have so many condo complexes, you only have so many landmarks, so many you know, universities or, or jobs or things that people want to be near. Right? And at the end, you know, it could be a year from now, it's like, okay, I've written about all these things. Right? I've covered everything in my market as it relates to geography. Well, maybe we want to be less specific with our geography and get more specific with our subject matter. And, and this is where if you are you know, not a real estate agent, this is where you should really be focusing as it relates to your keyword phrases, right? Having a little bit more broad geography and, and more specific subject matter. Now, as it relates to being a real estate agent, how can we get more specific with our subject matter? Well, we, we kind of want to start with, okay, well, what are those broad subject matter terms, right? Those big head terms, like homes for sale, or real estate, or condos for sale, or houses for sale. These are kind of the big terms, right? And then we have to think about, 
all right, how do we get more specific now with these things? Like, what are some of the qualifiers that somebody might add to our general subject matter to get a more specific search behavior? All right, well, we can think about price ranges. And in almost all of the markets where I look at this stuff, we see this kind of behavior where people are looking for homes for sale in, I see, like I look at Las Vegas or Phoenix or some of the hotter markets where there's a lot of search traffic. Um, and I'm always thinking in terms of like investors, right? Like you'll see these people who go out there and do homes for sale in Las Vegas or condos for sale in Las Vegas under $100,000 condos for sale in Las Vegas under 75,000 or under All right so that's one way we can add a qualifier to our keyword phrase right think adjectives so like ways of describing a house so it might be waterfront or oceanfront or mountain view right think with right and people will do searches like this all the time we see this kind of behavior a ton Right, and you'll see it in the PDF that we give you guys, where people are doing, you know, condos for sale in Seattle with two car garage, right? Where they're looking for things that are real specific, right? It's really hard to find a condo in Seattle with a two car garage. Most condos in the in the area are going to come with one parking space, right? And in, in our different markets, there's different things like this, right? Homes for sale in Phoenix with a master bedroom on the main floor. Right? It makes sense that in a market like Phoenix where a lot of people are retiring, that folks would end up wanting to have a master bedroom on the main floor. So think about those other kind of ways that people can, can really get in there and identify exactly what it is they're looking for. And one of the tips that I would give you, because I always get agents that say to me, well, we don't have these things in our market, right? Like we don't have subdivisions. I had a lady tell me this one time, and I always want to help somebody like that, because I know that even if you don't have like a subdivision or a condo complex in your market, there's still ways, right? And a lot of it has to do with how we can really hone in on the features that somebody might be looking for in a home. But the... There's always these kind of things in there that other agents in your market will add to their listings that help you understand what consumers might be out there looking for. And so I had a lady one time, she said, well, look, we just, we don't have these subdivisions in our marketplace. And so I got on the phone with her and we jumped on her website. Then I started looking at properties on her website. And I, I came across a couple that were like, you know, this home is located in the beautiful Johnsonville Estates. And I was like, well, Jenny, what is Johnsonville Estates? And she said, oh, well, you know, yeah, that, that's what the builder called that place, but, you know, none of the people around here call it that. And I said, look, when somebody goes online, if, they're, if they just started out at Trulia, okay, and they're looking through properties on Trulia, and they come across this property that an agent in your marketplace has marketed as being in Johnsonville Estates, if they can't really identify on Trulia, like where are all the other places in Johnsonville Estates, right? They will absolutely go out, or sometimes they'll do it later, right? They'll come back a, a week later and they're showing their husband, hey, I want to show you this place. It was in this, this it was Johnsonville Estate, and they'll go in there and they'll type in homes for sale in Johnsonville Estates, you know, Omaha, Nebraska, right? They're doing that based on something they've seen out there. So, a, a Big tip is look at your MLS. How are agents marketing properties? Because when people find properties like that, they will absolutely go back to the search engines and want to get honed in on particular types of properties. So think about how do they market those things in the MLS or what fields does your MLS have? Right? And there's all different ways from an adjective perspective that we can describe homes, right? Colonials or Victorians or brick houses. Right, we can describe the property, right? Maybe it's an equestrian property or a retirement community or or a gated community. So homes for sale in Birch Bay, you know, in a gated community. Names of builders. Some of the some of the most highly trafficked posts that I've seen on Active Rain actually have to do with names of builders. Right? Where people will go out that like if if Dell Webb was building a brand new subdivision in, you know, my town of Anthem, right? I would definitely want to have a blog post out there about 
you know, new Dell Web homes for sale in Anthem. Right? Where my 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 adjective or my enhancer to the, the baseline subject matter, which was homes for sale, right, in Anthem. And that's a pretty generic geography as it relates to my business, right? Just a city. So new homes, new Dell Web homes even, new Dell Web homes for sale in Anthem. All right, a couple of adjectives. New, Dell Web being the name of the builder. Right, so there's all these kind of different ways. Again, in that list of 500 keyword phrases, you guys are going to have 500 just different random ways, and what you're going to have to do is take those and apply them to your market because you might not have Dell Web, right? You might have Pulte, so it would be new Pulte homes for sale in Anthem. Maybe it's new Pulte homes for sale in the name of the subdivision. All right, and then just some examples here. The, this one, the homes for sale under $200,000 in Lacey. We had a gentleman, so we used to do this thing called Rain Camp. We'd go around the country, and we would basically teach this similar stuff to what I'm teaching you guys on these these classes. But we, it was eight hours, and everybody came, and they sat in the, the seats. And and my friend Ben and I did this this Rain Camp. Okay, so we had the very first one we ever did was in Seattle, and then about 14 months later, our last live rain camp was in Seattle again. And I had a guy at that second rain camp come up to me in between one of the breaks, and he said, "Hey, man, I really want to thank you. Um, something you guys talked about that first rain camp has added six new deals to my business, um, and, and man, I'm getting a ton of traffic to my website." And I said, "All right, well." tell me what's going on, man. What, what are you doing? I, I love to hear success stories so I can share them. And he said, okay, I, I work around Fort Lewis, or it's called Joint Base lewis McCord. It used to be Fort Lewis Army Base and McCord Air Force Base, and now it's this big military installation. It's south of Seattle. It's south of Tacoma, even, um, in Washington State. And he said, I, I work around Joint Base lewis McCord." And he said, in that, that first rain camp, you guys talked about this idea of people looking for homes for sale in specific price points. And so I went out and I wrote a blog post about every one of the cities around the base. And then I did it in conjunctions with different price points in those cities. So he, did, he didn't just stop, though, with homes for sale under $200,000 in Lacey. Because there's also Lakewood, there's also DuPont, there's also Stillicum, there's also uh, you know, a bunch of other little towns around there that somebody moving to the base and being relocated to the base might consider living. So he didn't just do homes for sale under two hundred thousand in Lacey. He did homes for sale under two hundred thousand in Dupont. Homes for sale under two hundred thousand in Stillicum. Right? He did homes for sale under one hundred fifty thousand in Lacey. Under one hundred fifty thousand in Stillicum. He did homes for sale under one hundred thousand near Joint Base Lewis McCord. Right? He did all these different kind of long tail sort of search behaviors. He created blog posts out of them that did really well for his business. Okay, it really helped him to hone in on the people that he wanted to visit, right? He was interested in helping those people who were relocating the base. A few things to consider as you're kind of creating these keyword phrases, okay? The, the keyword phrase needs to be in the front of your title. So when you do a blog post on Active Rain and you you type your title in. We've got a little counter up there. And when you get to the end of that counter, if you go over it, you can actually publish your blog post still. But the counter will give you the words that Google, or the, the number of characters that Google's actually going to display. And, the, and it's the main portion of what they index. So if you want to do the, the flowery descriptions, right? Like the one lady had, you know, a charming, a charming house in a wonderful community. That's th those fluffy kind of you know add-ons need to be at the end of the title, right? The keyword phrase, whatever the word or the phrase that you want somebody to type in that to get to find your blog post, that needs to be in the front of that title. So if you decide to add the f the flowery description, right, put it towards the end. Now your keyword phrase should be under seventy characters. It can go over, but just realize that. Anything over that's not going to display when somebody types your, your phrase in, right? That's why you want to have that keyword phrase up near the front. It's the first thing the search engine is looking at. 
and again, we talked about this last week, but we never want to target more than one keyword. I and mean, I see this all the time, right? Because I, I think what happens is people think, oh, well, I can get away. Look, if it's going to be homes for sale under 200000 in Lacey, right? Instead of writing another blog post for homes for sale under 200000 in Stillicum or another one for homes for sale under 200000 in DuPont, I'm just going to make one blog post and I'm going to make it homes for sale under $200,000 in Lacey, comma, DuPont, comma, Stillicum. And that way, if they type in any of those things, right, they can, they'll find my blog post. Well, not really, right, because as we... You know, for every additional thing that we set out to target with one keyword phrase or one blog post, that's going to diminish our ability to be able to rank for any of the things that we wanted to. Right? So three posts, one each of homes for sale in under 200,000 in Lacey and Stillicum and in DuPont is going to be much, much more effective than, you know, one post that has all three of those things targeted in it. And you're always going to have that geography in there. Now, look, if, you're, if your aim is not to rank in the search engine, well, that's probably the wrong way to say that. We all want to rank in the search engine. But there's sometimes you'll write a post where the goal isn't necessarily to get it to rank, right? Or maybe there's just not a good way to get it to rank by adding geography in there, right? Or maybe it's a post you wrote for somebody specifically, like, if it doesn't make sense to have the geography in there, don't put it in there. If it does, definitely get it in there. Okay. If you're, so let me spend like two minutes with uh, you're not a real estate agent. Okay. And again, I realize this class is mainly geared towards real estate agents. This concept of using geography as it relates to subject matter for let's say a loan officer, okay, because because loan officers, I realize you guys aren't quite the same as a real estate agent, right? A real estate agent generally works like a certain area. And if you're a loan officer, you might say, look, I work the entire state of Washington. In fact, I'm licensed to do loans in Washington, Oregon, California, and Idaho. So what you need to do is start thinking about keyword phrases then from the perspective of the subject matter, right? So like, USDA, like qualifying for a USDA home loan in North Carolina, right? We've got a lady, Eleanor Thorne, who, who will absolutely tell you, if you were to call Eleanor Thorne right now and say, what's been your most successful single blog post, she would say it's been qualifying for USDA home loans in North Carolina. She gets traffic to that blog post every single day, right? Where she got very specific with her subject matter, qualifying for a USDA home loan. Right, FHA approved condos in Seattle. Right, that's definitely a blog post that a loan officer could write. A real estate agent could write that one as well. But we got very specific, you know, FHA approved condos in Seattle. Right, and now, if, like, so I, I had a lady. Her name's Janet Gilball, and she, she's a, a loan officer out of the Bay Area. And she she was telling me one day. And it was after rain camps. So we talked about these similar things at our rain camp. And she, she said, I, I just, I don't buy it. She said, I don't think that people go out and search for loan officers or loan information and use these, these geographic indicators. And so we kind of made a little bet. And I said, okay, I want you to write like three or four of these posts, these types of posts. And let's just look and we'll kind of gauge your traffic. She called me back like three, I'd forgotten about it. You know, she called me back three months later, said I was wrong, I'm sorry. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm sure I wasn't right, but if you think you were wrong, okay, like tell me what's going on. And she said, well, I wrote about kitty condo loans, and she's in the Bay Area, there's a lot of universities around here. And she said, I, I wrote about kitty condo loans in Berkeley. So Berkeley has, uh, you know, Cal Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley. And she said, you know, I, I didn't think people searched like that. She said, but I had a lady call me and say, hey, my, my daughter's moving to, you know, going to school at Berkeley, and, and we were interested instead of, you know, wasting four years on rent, we wanted to buy a condo for her there. And so we were doing some research about people that did, you know, we'd heard of this kitty condo loan. And so we were doing some research, and we came across your blog post. And Janet was a little bit floored. Like, she couldn't believe that somebody – would instead of just doing kitty condo loans, they would actually look for 
you know, that information as it related to a geography, right, like where they were actually going to get the loan. From her perspective, she can do those loans everywhere, so maybe it would have made more sense for her to do kitty condo loans in California, right? But by getting more specific, she was able to target a more specific customer. She was able to rank more efficiently on that first page. She was able to get in front of somebody that, that needed something that she was able to offer. All right, so what are some other kinds of keyword phrases? What are maybe some other things that people might start thinking about searching for as they get ready to buy a house? And this is not like rocket science, right? Information about living somewhere? Well, no, duh, right? Like somebody, obviously people are looking for this as they kind of get started. This is generally going to be like somebody that's moving you know, from like one subdivision to the next subdivision over, they're just moving up or they're moving down kind of in the same area. They might not be looking for this information because they kind of have an idea of their own area. But if I was like, I grew up in Seattle my whole life. If I was moving to, you know, Everett, which is only 30 miles north of Seattle, 20 miles, right? Like I don't know Everett. I don't know the good neighborhood. I would have to, I would still have to set out to kind of educate myself even on a town 20 miles from me. Right, so best neighborhoods, tax information, loan information. These best neighborhood posts. This stuff gets searched for a lot, right? Best neighborhoods in Seattle, best neighborhoods in Charlotte, North Carolina, top neighborhoods in, right? And what this becomes is just a collection of other posts that you've written. So using content that you've already created to create additional content can be a great way to target other sorts of keyword phrases. So like, you know, here's some of the the click numbers, and so that column on the right that you see is the number of clicks that these posts have had on them. And, right, so like that top 10 neighborhoods in Columbia, South Carolina, it's had 11,000 clicks on it. It's more now, I'm sure. This is a little bit old slide, a couple of months old. Right, best neighborhoods in Carmel, Indiana, right? Top Cary, North Carolina neighborhoods. Here's the example from Top Cary, North Carolina neighborhoods. So that becomes the keyword phrase of her blog post. And then as we go down in here, we'll actually see that she's got a little bit of a write-up about each neighborhood, right? Cary Park, Highcroft. I mean, these are all subdivisions inside of Cary, or neighborhoods. Notice there's a link in each one of those. She's written a full bore post where Cary Park, you know, homes for sale in Cary Park neighborhood, Cary NC is the keyword phrase, right? But she's taken those posts and she's got one for homes for sale in the Highcroft neighborhood, Cary, North Carolina. She's taken those posts and she's wrapped them up into this one kind of more broad post about top Cary, North Carolina neighborhoods. This is a great resource. Right? This is not this is a resource that she can not only sit on her hands and hope people find in the search engines, which they're doing, right? This one has thirty nine hundred clicks on it. I'm sure it's it's well north of four thousand at this point. This is also a post that she could use as kind of a, hey, you know, I, I got somebody new, I got a lead that just won't respond to me. You know, I noticed you've been looking in Cary. Hey, here's a blog post I wrote about some of the better neighborhoods in Cary. You might consider taking a look at some of these. You know, that's a great way to kind of open that door with somebody. Tax information, we see all kinds of search behavior around tax information. Now, now I realize a lot of this stuff can be you know, after they've moved in, right? Like if I'm, if I'm doing a, you know, how do I dispute my tax assessment in Seattle? Right? I probably already live in the house, but maybe I'm thinking about getting ready to sell and I want to see if I can get the taxes down a little bit so that the next person that buys, like right? there's reasons that people might be doing these searches beyond they're looking to buy something, right? You see a lot of surge traffic around property taxes or tax information. Right, if you guys have like, if, especially when these things are up for votes, right? It's a great time to get information about this out there. When when you know millage votes are coming up or that kind of a thing. Loan information or home buying programs, right? Like just like the example I gave you guys from Eleanor, qualifying for a USDA home loan in North Carolina, right? We see a ton of search behavior around FHA loan limits and then VA and FHA approved condos. 
that's you definitely want to have something out there like that, right? VA approved condos in Bellevue, VA approved condos in Kirkland, in Redmond, in Seattle, in Everett, right? I mean, when you start to think about these things, it almost becomes like, wow, I'll have enough to blog about for the rest of my life. Right? If there's special kinds of programs that are offered, maybe at a state level or something like that, right? People are looking for information about this stuff, and generally they're looking for that information as it relates to where they are, where they want to be, where they want to have a loan, where they want to buy a condo. Another really good kind of subject matter, I guess, would be what questions do people ask? So your emails can become a great source of content for your blog because you're getting questions from your clients all the time via email. When you write a blog post that's designed to answer a question that somebody has asked you, the best way to position that blog post from a keyword standpoint is to make the title of the blog post the question not the answer okay and I see a lot of people that will make that they'll try to make the the title something catchy and generally in doing that they'll they'll give the answer right you want to think about how is somebody setting out to find you right they're gonna go to the search engine and type the question so if you're using your emails, right, your client emails you, they say, hey, I've got, you know, can you tell me what do we do to go about, right? So it's it's after closing, right, you've already collected your check, but your clients still look at you as a resource and they email you and say, hey, we're interested in disputing our tax assessment. How do we do that? Right? You have two options. You can either, well, you have three options. You can call them, right? You could dig out, you could email them. And maybe you've answered that question before. So you dig out an old email, you make a couple adjustments to the email, you update it with the new facts, and you send them the email. What have you done in that case? You've educated them. Awesome. Good job. A, a more effective strategy may have been to take that question, take the answer, and put it in a blog post, and then send them the link and say, hey, I, I just, thanks. It was a great question. I've actually had somebody else ask me that question in the past. I'm sure I'll get the question again in the future. So I wrote a blog post for you with the answer to that question. So now you've answered their question. Right? But you also put that thing out there now, right, where the keyword phrase is the question, how do I dispute my tax assessment in Seattle? You put it out there now for other people to be able to find as well. Okay, so the question I always get, I'm sure somebody's asked it at this point, we're far enough into this class, how do I figure out in my market what people are looking for? Well, probably the best way to do that is Google AdWord Keyword Tool, but uh, there's some stuff that goes along with that. There are kind of a, a disclaimer. Okay, so in order to find the Google AdWords keyword tool, you just go and type in Google AdWords keyword tool into Google, okay, and the first result that you're going to get is this adwords.google.com slash keyword tool. So I get in here to the Google AdWords keyword tool, and essentially this is a, a function of Google AdWords. Now, Google AdWords is where we can go out there and pay to rank for certain terms. Now, we're not going to use this to, to figure out you know, how, what we want to pay for. We're going to use this to see how often certain phrases are searched for. So we can go in here, and I'm logged into this, my Google AdWords. Uh, no, I'm not logged in. So you don't even need to have a Google AdWords account to do this. But I get in here and I say, okay, Aftertuck Village, Shelton CT, and Google's going to say, okay, this on average is searched for about 110 times a month. Now, what you will see down here is then a bunch of kind of related keyword phrases, right? So, like, people are searching Aftertuck Village. Well, guess what? A lot of people are searching Crescent Village, too, which is another condo complex. So there's something I might consider writing about. Okay, I'm searching Aspta Condo Shelton CT at a little bit lower rate, right? And I can kind of start to look at this and figure out, like, where do I want to fit in there? 
Okay, but there's something to be kind of cautious of here. I want to go back, and we looked at, at this kind of set of data last time, but in the last 30 days, right, we've had a bunch of people coming here doing a lot of different kind of searches around this Aspatuck Village place. Okay, and in fact, there were seven people that did the search Aspatuck Village condos for sale, and I guess four of those were brand new searchers. Now, that's a that's pretty desirable people that I want to be in front of, right? Somebody's looking for a, you know, a condo for sale in this particular place. But when I come up here to Google AdWords keyword tool, and I say Google, like I, let's say I was going to write a blog post that was Aspatuck Village condos for sale. And I'd say, Google, how often is that searched for? They're going to tell me it's never searched for. They give me dash, right? There's not a number in there, so that would lead me to believe it's zero. But we can obviously see in our analytics here that they did that people search for this. So why would they say it's zero? Well, what this really is telling us that it's less than about 40. Now, just because something has less than 40 searches a month on average, that doesn't mean we should not write about it, right? Because I want to get in front of those seven people that search Aspatuck Village condos for sale. So you kind of have to use this with a grain of salt because people, people search these very specific things. They, they just don't do it in a high enough volume that it's worth Google telling you to do AdWords around it. Right? What they're trying to do here is get you, they're going, ah, oh, forget about this term. Right? You should come down here and do, you know, condos for sale in Shelton, right? That one's got a bunch of a bunch of stuff you can can rank for, a bunch of traffic you can get. Right? Condos for sale in Vermont or something. I don't know. I'm sure somewhere in here is that. Right? You should just do condos for sale, right? That gets tons of traffic. So use this kind of sparingly right I can tell you if you're on the right track but really and and I understand at this point you you may not feel like you have a lot of this but your instincts and experience are best and we're trying to kind of right with that that PDF that has 500 ways that people searched homes for sale in the last 30 days like that's helping you kind of build your instincts up, right? Because your instincts will tell you that if somebody's searching homes for sale in Seattle near Amazon, right, there's a pretty good chance the people at Microsoft are doing that at, out in Redmond, right? The people in Boeing are doing that up in, up in Everett or down in Renton, right? They're searching homes for sale in Renton near Boeing. So those 500 keywords that we're going to send you guys... I want you to look through them. I want you to really kind of get a sense for how people search for information out there. And we've given you a little bit of sense today. Now, your experience starts to come in based on your, your understanding of your market. Like in Seattle, we call, you know, one-story houses ramblers, right? So you might do a, a post like, you know, ramblers for sale in King County, right? They may, you may not use the term rambler in your neck of the woods. If you guys use some other term for a single-story home, maybe you call them single-story homes, right? It would become single-story homes for sale, you know, in Omaha. All right, so let, let's do a little bit of brainstorming here. I want you guys just, everybody on the call right now, once you get into that that question area, Oh, that's interesting, Trey. Trey says Google is now using people to the keyword planner tool. Well, I'm going to have to investigate that. Thank you for the tip. Yeah, Penny, it looks like a bunch of you guys are getting this um, kind of redirected to this keyword planner tool. I can't imagine that it operates in a much different fashion than the AdWords keyword tool. Right? It's going to probably give you similar information. I think the keyword planner is probably going to give you some, you know, here's some related types of searches that people did, or if this person searched for X, they also searched for Y sort of relationships. Okay. Jane, just Google, Google AdWord keyword tool. Okay, so if you want to find that, you Google this phrase right here. 
why don't you guys for me right now give me one example everybody give me one example of something you can see yourself writing about in your own market right one of these real specific sorts of examples I want to see how close you guys are because sometimes we get some people that are just right on and sometimes people miss a little bit and it's good to look at some of those misses Bob says detached homes in Mount, Mount Airy, Maryland, under three hundred fifty thousand. Now that's a great long tail phrase, right? Now, Bob, you might be able to kind of look at that phrase, and there might be a couple of of keywords even in that phrase, right? Like detached homes in Mount Airy, Maryland, could be its own post, right? Homes for sale in Mount Airy, Maryland, under three hundred fifty thousand, could be its own post, right? Together, it could definitely be its own post. Jim says, senior real estate downsizing. I mean, I, that's a great phrase, right? Now, Jim, you work somewhere, okay? So if you did a post like that, let's say you ranked for, for that post on the first page of the search engines with no geography. Well, now, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get a lot of traffic, right? And most of that traffic is not going to be specific to where you actually do business. I don't know. You could be a loan officer for all I know, giving this as an example. But So you might want to consider, right, senior real estate downsizing Washington State or in Seattle or something like that. Now, look, Google, when somebody searches, Google doesn't just give them results like in a void. Right? They know I'm sitting in Seattle. They know I'm sitting in San Jose. They know I'm sitting in LA. They know they know where I am. So adding these kind of geographic qualifiers can actually help them find content for somebody, even if that person isn't using geographical components of their search, right? So even if they just did senior real estate downsizing, but they were in Seattle, it may behoove you to have Seattle as a part of your keyword and phrase. Homes for sale within walking distance of, and she put Lake Calhoun, but it could be within walking distance of Amazon, within walking distance of the Microsoft campus, right? It could be within walking distance of the University of Washington, right? So homes for sale within walking distance of, there's a whole set of things you could think about adding to that to make that a keyword phrase that worked for you. That's a great example, Fabiana. Kim says, homes for sale in Payson, Arizona with mountain views. Absolutely, right? That doesn't make sense for anybody in Nebraska, right? But that makes sense for Kim. Makes sense for somebody around Seattle. Makes sense for somebody in Denver. Okay, you guys are giving a lot of really good examples here. What paperwork is needed to get my condo approved with FHA, Eric? Awesome example, right, of a question that you've probably gotten before. And if you were to look in your email, you probably have the answer to it somewhere. Oceanfront condos for sale in Jacksonville Beach. It's a great, these are really good. Hey, have an awesome weekend. A lot of you guys have fun stuff planned. Have a great rest of your week in real estate. On behalf of Carrie and Michelle behind the scenes, my name is Bob Stewart at Active Brand University. Bye-bye, everybody.